so so far we have discussed this uh, f distributions we talked about convergence of random variables and we talked about uh, consistency and then talked about order statistics in the last class we talked about order statistics and discussed how to find distribution of an order statistic when it is discrete okay we just said that let's say if my random variable is discrete that is it takes values in some finite set or some countable set then if you are interested in knowing what is the smallest value the distribution of the smallest value distribution of the second smallest value distribution of the second value or the distribution of the maximum value like that we discussed one way to find its distribution right if you recall we defined some Bernoulli random variable we took their summation and based on that we did some computations so that idea can be extended even when your random variable is continuous I dis did not discuss that but the expression of that expression for that is given in the slides and uh, you people can verify how to get the expression by going through the computations yourself or refer to the book for the computations all the computations are given in the book so today we will go ahead and uh, just cover one more topic about generating random samples so this actually we already did right like uh, this uh, topic of generating random sample we have discussed earlier do anybody remember when was this yeah we try to find samples or generate sample according to a given distribution using uniform samples by defining inverse of that given CDF function ok now let us see if we can little go beyond that ok so on that front we are going to discuss two methods called direct and indirect method ok so direct method is what we already know so in direct method also there could be different possibilities and uh, one possibility we already know suppose let us say I have been given x which is discrete or let us say x is continuous now I have been asked to generate x such that it has CDF of F. Now you know how to do this. You have to start with an uniform random variable and set your x to be F inverse of u. Once you do this, you already know that x has a CDF of F. Right? and uh, this is the argument for that we have already discussed this ok next let us look into a specific example suppose I have been told that I want to generate a random variable which follows exponential distribution with parameter lambda. So, for this I already know that the CDF I want is given by this expression. Right? Everybody agree that the CDF that I am interested is f of x equals to 1 minus e to the power lambda x. Right? This is the CDF for my exponential distribution. 
Now I need to define f inverse for this function. Okay. So what is the f inverse for this function? Suppose let's say you call this some value u. Yeah. Then you can write f inverse of u like this. Okay, all you need to do is you just take it, it becomes 1 minus u, then the x that gives me this particular u is can be written as log of 1 by lambda with a minus. So, this will give me that x for which will yield this particular value u that I am interested in. So, now I know this is my inverse function. Now, all I have to do is take your x to be minus 1 by lambda log of 1 minus u. If you take this, we already know that this is going to follow exponential distribution with parameter lambda. Everybody agree that if I do like this, it is going to give me this x. If I do like this, x is going to have exponential distribution with parameter lambda. So, by this what I mean here is what does this mean? Suppose let us say let us say u1, u2, u3 and you have generated let us say some 100 samples and now what I am doing is I am now doing 1 minus lambda log of 1 minus u1 and then 1 minus lambda log of 1 minus u2 and I am calling this as x1 and calling this for x2 like this and 1 minus lambda log of 1 minus u100 this as x100. So, whatever the new samples I got x1, x2, x100 they are following the exponential distribution with parameter lambda. Okay, fine. So, exponential was simple. Now, let us see using this simple method what else we can generate. Let us see is it possible for us to generate gamma distribution with parameter n and lambda. For some integer n and some non-zero value of lambda. Now, given that I know how to generate samples from exponential distribution just as we did in this example. Let us try to see that we can leverage this. So, I know something about exponential, how to generate exponential distribution easily. But if I can do that, maybe I should attempt to connect my gamma distribution with the exponential distributions and try to exploit that relation. Okay. But we know that there exists a relation between gamma distribution and exponential distribution, right? Suppose you have x1, x2, xn, these are all iid, exponentially distribution with parameter lambda. Then we already know that their summation is gamma distributed with parameter n lambda. So, then what is one way to generate gamma distribution? louder just generate n exponentially distributed random variable and then add then it will become a gamma but to generate exponential distribution how I did I generated uniform distribution and then use it so I am going to just use this so, ease of this iid random variable, first I am going to generate them following making them follow exponential distribution using my uniform random variables. 
So I am going to generate uniform random variables u1, u2 up to un and set xi equals to minus 1 by lambda log 1 minus u. And I know that if I do like that xi is exponentially distributed with parameter lambda. And now I have this xi which are exponentially distributed in lambda, just add them, then I am going to get this x to be gamma distributed. So if I have to directly write this in terms of my uniform random variable, I have to do is generate my uniform random variables and then add them after taking the log and doing by scaling with 1 minus lambda, then whatever I get is directly gamma distributed with parameter n and lambda. You, you see that I am basically use I am playing around with the properties. Okay? And then applying this functions of random variable properties to extract all these uh, desired properties. Okay, now I know. Anybody has any question on how to generate this gamma distribution now? Okay, now once I know gamma, maybe I can also go and generate a chi square distribution because gamma distribution and chi square distributions are related, right? So I know that chi square distribution with the 2n degrees of freedom is nothing but a gamma distribution with parameter n and half. So to generate a gamma distribution with parameter n and half, what should I do? Exponential with what parameter? Half. So I need to generate n number of exponentially distributed random variable with parameter half and then simply add them that will directly give me chi square distribution. And now such relations should be exploited to even generate other distributions. Like suppose if you want to generate beta distributions with parameter m and n, how you are going to do that? You again first exploit the relation that x if I am going to take log of ui's where i is running from m that is basically what I am trying to do here is I am taking the average of two sums in the numerator I am taking the sum of m uniform random variable after applying the log function and in the denominator I am taking sum of all the m plus n uniform random variables after applying the log function. We know that if I do this transformation on the uniform random variable, it is already beta distributed with parameter m and n. So all you readily got like just uh, directly by taking uniform random variable and applying this uh, transformation, you readily got beta distribution. Okay, so this method is nice. We are basically exploiting the fact that the relation between one distribution with the other and as long as uh, we could represent it, one of them generate one of those random variables through uniform random variable like we are done because if it if for example here gamma distribution depends on exponential. And I know how to generate exponential using uniform random variable, right? So you either gamma, chi square or beta, everything can be generated using only uniform random variables. And uniform is something simple which we can assume to be available to us and then just use these properties to get this distribution. But now, is this trick works all the time? Maybe it may not work all the time. One simple example I have given is 
if I want to generate let us say x is x1 square where n is odd. Now, in this case x1 square is nothing but gamma with what parameters n by 2 and and this we know if I have to write it as a sum of exponential random variables I have to add n by 2 exponential but when n is odd can I do that no right you cannot add 10 by 2 number of exponential random variables when n is odd. So, then that times this simple method does not work ok. And uh, yeah and uh, what is the relation between chi square distribution and uh, gamma distribution did we study that? Anybody recall what is the other distribution between or like uh, relation between uh, Gaussian and uh, chi square distribution? Okay, I want to generate chi square distribution with 1 degrees of freedom. What is the relation between chi square distribution with 1 degrees of freedom and Gaussian distribution? This is this is normal with what? What parameters? Now see now this chi square distribution with one degrees of freedom. I know that this I can't generate with my gamma method because this degrees of freedom is odd. So because of this, I can't even generate the Gaussian distribution in this case, right? Is this clear to all of you? Okay, now we need to overcome this. What other methods we have? So, we will just explore one other direct method now. Okay, by the way, if you have to the previous methods the previous direct method we applied, we always needed to do f inverse, right? If you want to generate a x according to which is has the CDF f, then I needed to find, I needed to set f equals to f inverse of u. So, you need to find what is that f inverse function. But always finding f inverse is not an easy task maybe something like uh, exponential it was easy because of its simple structure. So, in general if you have to like invert I mean basically you need to solve such integration functions like suppose let us say u is f of x and I want to invert f how you are going to get. So, I, I want to find out if I want to invert if you give me u, I need to found, find what is that x that will give me u when I apply f on x. So, for example, let us say u have been given to you and f is let us say is given as an integration of this. Now, to find what is that x which will give me this u, I need to reverse this integration process which can be very hard ok. So, when f was exponentially distributed this was easy it was like 1, one upon e to the power lambda x. But uh, every time you may not be dealing with exponential right you may have to deal with other distributions. So, doing this inversion is required and that may become hard ok. So, that is why we have to resort we have to look for other methods than what we just discussed. Okay, so there is a one method called Box Miller 
method which is also a direct method which is particularly useful to generate normal distribution samples according to following normal distribution so let's see how does this work suppose you have two random variables u1 and u2 which are iid and uniformly distributed now you define two values r which is a transformation on u1 and theta2 which is a transformation on u2 now you define x1 to be r cos theta and x2 to be r sin theta it so happens that x1 and x2 are iid and also gaussian with parameter 0 and 1 okay you can verify this this exercise you people have been doing right multiple times like basically i am doing this is a one transformation and this is another transformation okay and if i tell you and here can you find what how this r and theta are dist r, r and theta are independent Uh, they are functions of u1 and u2 but u1 u, u2 are independent so r and theta are independent will you be able to find distributions of r and theta joint distribution of r and theta you should be able to write like you know the distribution of u1 r is a function of u1 you should be able to find distribution of r and uh, you should be able to also find distribution of theta and now x1 depends on both r and theta but r and theta are independent you should be also able to find the distribution of x1 and x2 here and uh, i mean you can apply the jacobian method that we have discussed before and you once you do that you will see that and uh, you find their joint distribution and when you find their marginal you will see that both x1 and x2 are gaussian distributed so since you know the method it is just about uh, doing the calculations just working out the details i am skipping and you should verify this okay so you see that like the previous method just using this based on this uniform distribution generating gaussian was not feasible right just based on uniform we, are, we could not generate Gaussian distribution but now we just came up with other method here which is also using uniform distribution but it is still giving us Gaussian distribution it is just like we need to do the appropriate mapping okay by transforming one and in an appropriate way we may get desired distribution but uh, what is that mapping that is the question and that need to be solved like here this box miller method maybe this box miller figured out that okay if i do transformations like this if i take r and theta in terms of u1 u2 like this and if i define an x1 and x2 then he said that this transformation actually gives what i want okay it's not necessary that if i want to generate let's say tomorrow uh, binomial distribution the same kind of transformation may will work maybe you have to find a other transformation suitable for that case however i noticed this here this this uh, uh, here we are interested in generating gaussian and gaussian is continuous 